That was very lucky, really. When I first um, took an office in Goldfield's house in Sydney, looking out over the harbour, that would be in 67, a friend of Billy Luscombe's called uh, Butt. What was his Christian name? Remember? Ron? No, I don't remember. Anyway, he worked with Bill at Bailey's insurance company, up in the same building about six floors up, and he had a bit of a business on the side, quite a clever bloke. He bought reasonably cheaply a lot of good Australian paintings which he rented to people who had bare walls in their offices actually it was quite killing when you think about it and he came into my office one day and he said god that's an enormous bare wall <laughs> you ought to rent a decent sized picture so I said yeah well, that's a good idea dreadful really isn't it like renting sort of shelves of books you know and so he said um, I've got just the thing for you and he brought downstairs this nine panel painting by Prohart, which was Johnson's snake bite antidote. I didn't know that it was Johnson's snake bite antidote. I just sat at the end of the table and either stared out of the window at the opera house or stared at the wall opposite at Johnson's snake bite. And gradually it sort of dawned on me what a great picture it was. And I wondered what the story was. So I rang him up and I said, what is this painting? He said, oh, it's called Johnson's snake bite antidote. So I said, well, you know, this guy Prohart, you know, who is he exactly? So he explained that he was a weird sort of bloke who lived out near Broken Hill who played the organ in the middle of the night and painted and had been a, a miner and all that sort of stuff. And so I rang Pro Hard up and I said to him, I've got a painting you painted, Johnson Snake by Antidote, could you tell me anything about it? And he said, oh yes. He said, oh, I wonder what had happened to that. That's one of my favorite paintings, mate. So he said, uh, that's Johnson Snake Bite. He said, that's actually a Banjo Patterson poem. You know, just look it up and you'll see what it is, mate. He said, by the way, he said, if you want to get rid of it, he said, I'll buy it back off you. So I said, well, I don't particularly want to sell it because I like it a lot. I would bought it by this time from Ron Butt, I should explain. And um, I love it, actually. But I said, if it means that much to you, I'll swap it with you for another one. So I thought no more about it. And about two or three months later, I was sitting in the office about midday, I suppose. And the girl outside said, oh, there's Mr. Hart to see you. Well, we happened to have a solicitor in Brisbane who did a lot of our work in Queensland whose name was Hart. So I thought, what the hell's he doing down here? See, so I went to the door and there was this huge, sort of broad, very sort of tough looking bloke with great hands, you know, sort of all splintered and gnarled and torn and a, and a packet under his arm. And it was Pro Hart. He said, Pro Hart! said, Greg, good to meet you, Mr. Vandenberg. So I said, come in, come and have a coffee. And he came in and he unwrapped this painting, which is this one here, which is of course, the man from Ironbark scene, he said, what do you think of that? So I said, I love it. I said, it's brilliant. He said, you, you swap it with me? And I said, before I could say knife, he whipped John, um, the Johnson, uh, no, I mean, the, uh, the snake bite went off the wall and uh, put up the, um, the one of the man from Ironbark. And uh, we sat and I, we were just promoting at that time a new white rum called Amity, because one of the companies that we owned was Beanley Rum. It was frightful mux, actually, but it was a rival to, <laughs> supposed to be a rival to, to, no, not Bundaberg, you know, the, the white rum, the American stuff. Oh. What's it called, you know, when you have rum and okay. coke? Bacardi, Bacardi, correct, Bacardi. So I said, would you like a, a rum and coke? He said, nothing better. So he had about six of these, and about an hour later, he said, oh, truth, he said, my wife's downstairs in the cab. So I said, oh. So he shot downstairs, paid off the cabbie and brought this woman up and he had another brown paper parcel under his arm and he plonked it on the sideboard and I said, look, you better have some lunch now. He said, that'd be good. So we had some beef sandwiches from the place across the road. They, were, they made the most brilliant beef sandwiches there. So we sat and ate these and he had about another six white rum and cokes. And, and then he said, oh, I've got to go off now. My agent's putting on an exhibition of my stuff. So he suddenly produced this second parcel and he whipped off the brown paper and said, there you are, I said, you've been such a sport, you have that. I said, and it was this other painting of, of uh, banks with specimen. Anyway, so, so he said, I said, you can't give me that. He, he said, oh, I can, it's my bloody painting, you can have it. So <laughs> off he disappeared. About two hours later, I got a phone call from this bloke who was his agent saying, Mr. Van der Borg. I said, yes, he said, this is so-and-so here. He said, I said, yes, he said, you've got one of my paintings there. So I said, I beg your pardon. He said, no, you've got one of my paintings there. I need it. It's number 36 in my exhibition. Um, so I said, well, I'm sorry. It was given to me by Pro Hart. Had he said nicely, and I'd realized it was a hopeless mistake, and this bloke had eaten drunk about a bottle or 
thing I'd have said, oh, well, of course, you know, but I, 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 he riled me because I thought, you know, you bugger. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, that's mine now. Anyway, Noel Lindblom, who was on the staff of the um, Sydney Morning Herald at the time, he, uh, he rang me the next day. He said, you'll never guess what I've done. So I said, what have you done? He said, I've just been to the Pro Heart Exhibition up in Paddow. And I said, yes. He said, uh, and there's, where there's a picture of number 36 should be, there's a white type notice saying this picture was stolen by Jonathan Vanderbilt. <laughs> 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 Isn't it brilliant? Yeah. And so we got them both here. It's booty, I suppose, or whatever. But get a shot of those later. Is this why you yeah. fled in the end, was it? This is why I had to leave the country in a hurry. Absolutely. <laughs>